with your presence, God. Bless us, God, with being in, in, in your midst, God, because everything we need, God, we'll receive in your presence, God. Everything we need, God, we will receive in your midst, God. So open up the windows of heaven this morning, God, and pour out your spirit upon us, God. We're asking and seeking and knocking on heaven's door according to your word in Matthew 7, God, believing that that door it will open, God, and you will pour out a double portion of love, strength, and power. God, do it for my brother right now. God, do it for my sister right now. God, we come, God, to praise you. We come to lift you up. We we come to magnify you, God. And this it's my prayer, God, that even if my neighbor is not praising you, God, I got a reason to give you glory, God. I, I have a reason to magnify you. I, I have a reason to lift up my hands. I have a reason to open up my mouth, God. And so I'm not going to act bougie. I'm not going to ask the daddy, God. I'm going to give you the right now praise that you deserve. Move in this house, God. And we make a vow that when we leave this place, God, we declare, we will say it was nobody but you, Lord, nobody but you. We will be like the one that turned around and said, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we offer this prayer. Amen. Amen. I wish I had a church that came to worship God and came to give God all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Hallelujah. Come on, turn your Bibles to the 22nd Psalm. The 22nd Psalm. I am reading from verse 25 to its conclusion. The 22nd Psalm. Come on, that's a familiar passage of scripture. We want to read right now in our morning word. I am reading the message version. Your version may be different, but the overall message is the same. The 22nd Psalm. Beginning at verse 25. Amen. Here in this great gathering for worship, I have discovered this praise life. And I'll do what I promise right here in front of the God worshipers. Down and outer sit at God's table and eat their field. Everyone on the hunt for God is here praising him. Live it up from head to toe. Don't ever quit. From the four corners of the earth, people are coming to their senses and running back to God. Long lost families are falling on their faces before him. God has taken charge. From now on, he has the last word. All the power mongers are before him worshiping. All the poor and powerless to worshiping, along with those who never got it together worshiping. Our children and their children will get in on this as the word is passed along from parent to child. Babies not yet conceived will hear the good news that God does what he says. Somebody needs to hear that. Babies not yet conceived will hear the good news that God does what he says. Come on, Sidney, let's worship God today in spirit and in truth.
glory and all the honor and all the praise. We thank our music ministry for ushering us into the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He won't fail you. He won't fail you. Oh, how we praise God. This is the time now where we give our announcements. We ask you and welcome you to the city of David. Asking that you would go ahead and share the link on your page that your family and your friends might join us in worshiping God in spirit and in truth this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me give you a, a few announcements. Uh, each year, millions of Americans face the reality of living with mental illness. During month, we show support for joining the national movement to raise awareness about mental health, fight stigmas about mental health, provide support, educate the public, and advocate for policies that support with mental illness and their families. Repeat after me, say family. Therapy, therapy, is, good. therapy is good. Say it loud. Family, family. Therapy, is good. therapy is good. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And so in this month, we will, I want to highlight the importance of mental health. And I want you to know that that is in alignment with your scripture. Your scripture says to go to God and God will forgive you because he's just and faithful. But then you read the Bible and the Bible tells us to confess our sins one to another and you will be healed. Confess your sins one to another. That means God has uniquely designed and gifted someone in head and heart to hear your situations, to hear your problems, to hear even your sins. And that through that individual who is working under the power of the Holy Ghost, you might be healed. So we go to God for forgiveness, but we allow God to use other people to help, help us to heal. Amen. And so you can go to therapy. Amen. Amen. We want to rid, rid ourselves of that negative connotation that therapy means that we are unhealthy and therapy means that we are cursed and all of that foolishness. We want to use the word of God to empower us, edify us, and educate us. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. We want to celebrate uh, May. We are walking into the month of May and these May babies have are taken over. Amen. The birthdays this month is 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 many. Amen. And so we want to shout out all of the birthdays. On the first, uh, yesterday was Sister Michelle Harris' birthday. And so we pray God's blessings upon her life that God may continue richly bless her this upcoming year. And then on tomorrow is Latanya Cleveland's birthday. We want to wish her a happy birthday. And then on the 5th, we have McQuellen Jones, her birthday. Marcy Jones, her birthday. Michelle Sav Savitre, her birthday. And Eliza Johnson's birthday. Amen. Amen. And then on next Saturday, I, no, next Friday, I believe, we have Brother Greg Martin's birthday. Amen. And so we want to, and then next Saturday is CJ's birthday. Amen. 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 I think Amen. CJ 18, y'all. Amen. Amen. And so we want to praise God for all of these birthdays and pray that God will richly and truly bless them with a wonderful year. Amen. 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 Praise God. I do have a few other announcements. We want to let you know that on next Saturday is a conversation at the city. Amen. And we are all gathered on the Zoom hotline. And Sister Roberta Fitzgerald is going to pour into us. And show us, amen, how to secure and keep the bag, amen? She's going to show us how to manage the coins that God has given us. And so we ask that you would join that Zoom. The information was e-blast and it's on our Facebook page that you might, uh, amen, be able to enjoy life on this side of heaven, amen? We want you to know that we're pressing our way to Achievement Sunday. You have approximately 20 more days, amen. The 22nd is the last day for you to fill out the link. If you know you're graduating or if you haven't graduated in the family, we ask that you uh, please fill out uh, that form that we might uh, celebrate on Achievement Sunday, the second Sunday in June. I want you to know that God is truly blessing us to not only do inreach and do out, but to do also outreach. And then we are coming together and partnering up with Bethel Amy on May 15th for our food giveaway. 
we are planning to hand out over 240 some odd boxes of, of groceries, both produce, meats and cheese and milk and all of those things and vegetables and also canned goods. And so we need volunteers. On that Friday, the 14th, we'll be meeting in order that we might package the groceries and then we're handing them out on Saturday the 15th. And so if you would do me this solid and email the church, we can put you on the volunteer hotline. Amen. You can volunteer either the 14th in the evening or sometime Friday or Saturday during the day from 12 to 2. Amen. We are uh, using what God has given us in order to be a blessing to our brothers and our sisters. Hear me, and I want to say this real slow so no one gets confused. We are ready to enter the sanctuary. Amen. We are ready to enter the sanctuary. After 14 some odd months, we're coming up on the time that it's time to go back into the house of God. Amen. And so we are reopening the doors first for Bible study. This whole month of May, strictly Bible study. Please don't pull up on Sunday. Strictly Bible study this whole month of May. And that starts this coming Tuesday. Amen. This coming Tuesday, we will have a waiver for you to, to sign. We ask that you sign the waiver. We will also ask that you bring your mask. We have purchased the necessary things that we need in order to make this as safe an environment as possible. Please right now begin to pray. Please right now begin to pray that God will continue to elevate our culture in such a level that we will all work on one accord because we are still operating under the guidelines of the county. Everybody can come into the sanctuary at the same time. We still must have certain feet of distance between one another. And so all of these details will be sent out that we might all be on one accord. But I need you to pray because I want it to be received in decency and in order. Amen. I'm going to say that again. I want you to be in prayer because I want these changes to be received in decency and in order. I don't want anybody coming with a contrary spirit that want to fight. Amen. They want to do strange stuff. Amen. Because that kind of behavior is still in some of us. Amen. And some of y'all prayers may not work on that Sunday. Amen. And we don't want that kind of confusion at the door. Amen. And so we want everybody to be on one accord that the city of David may worship God in spirit and in truth and be safe while doing it. Amen. And so we need volunteers. If you believe that you can help us or you're willing to help us in a, a certain manner to uh, facilitate Bible study and Sunday worship, we ask that you email the church. And then we will contact you in the ways that you can help. Now, the desire is that if we get enough volunteers, you would only have to sacrifice one Sunday out of the month. Amen. To work. And then the other three Sundays, you can come and look cute. Amen. And shout when Rose in this music ministry is singing. Amen. And so we need help from our volunteers. So if you would uh, email the church and declare uh, that you want to be a volunteer, that will be a blessing. Amen. 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 Praise God. We are pressing our way to this altar, believing in the power of prayer. I want to continue to call out the names that we know to call out. And I want you to begin to type the names that we might be unaware of at this moment. But I want you to know all names are covered in our corporate prayer. Amen. When we pray, we cover not only the words and the names that you have typed on your screen, but we even cover the silent petitions in your heart. The stuff you are afraid to even type or talk about or speak out into the atmosphere. We're lifting up the Martin family, the Bennett family, the Rogers family. We're lifting up the Gaines family. Amen. The Benefields, the Rose Merrills, the Ellis's family. We're lifting up Eureka Young and family. We're lifting up Bishop Young and his continual recovery. The Duro family, the Moreau family. Amen. We're praying for Jeff Robinson. We're praying for Tylen Dasher and Andrew Ireland. We're praying for Mother Alma Thomas. We're praying for Brother Ray Mame and Sister Carolyn Johnson Willis and Al Johnson. We're praying for Sister Lily Robinson. And we have a praise report that baby Elijah is going home. We're praying for Cousin Robin Bell. We're praying for Stephanie Macklin and John Downey and Walker Posey Jr. and Don Posey. We're praying for Leon Johnson. And we're 
praying for Richard Griffin and Brother Sammy, Mama Hattie Davis. We're praying for Sister Wanda and Kia Anderson. We're praying for Nate Robinson. Amen. Augustus Briscoe. We're praying and calling out the name of all of our educators covering every school, King Anthony School, Florence Griffin School, and all the other schools represented by our uh, educators and our administrators here at the city. We're praying for every family, every student right now that is processing the turn in the educational arena. We're praying for our online tutoring service, the Limu. Amen. We're praying right now for our seniors, praying right now for our young people, praying right now for those who are, are seeing depression come, come up against them. We're praying right now for those who can't even properly celebrate a birthday, feel like they can't properly celebrate a graduation. I'm praying right now, believing that angels will be sent to attend to every one of our needs. I'm praying for the city right now. Every member of the city, every friend of the city, every family member connected to the city, I'm praying for right now. Come on, Zion. Come on, pray. We believe that God can do it. David says, one thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I also seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold of the beauty of the Lord and to inquire of him in his temple. For in the times of trouble, he will provide for me a tabernacle. He will set me high on a hill. I'm praying, God, that you would move across the land. I'm praying, God, that this divide, this hatred, this evil will be rid of the land. God, I'm praying right now that love, God, I'm praying right now that agreement, God, we, we speak the power of agreement, God, we, we speak the power that two can walk together. We speak right now, God, that brother can walk with brother and sister can walk with sister. God, we come against any family dynamics that may be toxic. And it may be dysfunctional. We speak out against it right now, God, in the name of Jesus. We speak out against the spirit, God, that would have child bucking against parent and parent bucking against child. We speak right now, God, in every covenant union, God, that you would breathe on them a fresh wind. God, we speak encouragement, God, to those desiring and need new dynamics in relationship. God, we claim right now a blessing for those who need the windows to open up. God, do it right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, pray, Zion. Pray, city. Pray, pray. Let's pray according to James, believing that the fervent, effectual prayers will affirm much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you glory, God. We magnify you. We exalt you. We declare there's none like you. situation, God, that would prevent us from cultivating and prevent us from maintaining the right relationship we have with our Savior, God. In fact, we declare like Paul, nothing shall separate us from that love, neither height nor depths nor, de nor things are in our present or in our past shall separate us from that love. And so, God, we are moving this week in expectation, God. We are moving in this day in expectation, God, realizing that you are the same God. The same God that raised him up is the same God that can raise us up. And so we pray to you, God. We bow down to you. 
you, God. We realize that we are not worthy to gather the crumbs under the, thy table, but your property is always to have mercy, God. Have mercy on us this morning, God. In fact, I pray right now that you would convict us and create in us a clean heart, God, and renew a right spirit within. I pray right now, God, believe in my faith that every name that we've called out and every name that we have typed out on the screen, God, you are still listening, God. I pray right now, God, for even the silent petitions of our heart right now, God, you are moving in that situation. You are moving on that behalf, God. I lift up right now, God, Cleo Piper by her name, God. Believe in right now, God, Mia Piper right now, God, by her name, God. Believe in that you will turn the situation around, God. We're lifting up right now, God, our hands and declaring, God, there's nobody like you, God. Declaring that we look high in this life and we look low in this life. And yet it's still our testimony, God. There's nobody like you, God. So move in the land, God. Lift up a bow down head amongst us, God. Men a broken heart amongst us, God. We believe that you can do it, God. We even thank you for our bad days, God. Because our bad days let us know, God, that you are still on the throne, God. Our bad days let us know, God, that you still are, have us as the apple of your eye. Our bad days, God, help us to realize, God, that your strength will be made perfect, God, in every life situation and circumstance according to our lives. And because of that, God, we believe that all things shall work together for our good, God. And so we smile, God, in the midst of our pain. We smile, God, in the midst of our affliction. We smile now in the midst of the attacks, God, realizing that we're standing on scripture, God, that many are the afflicted, God, but you can and you will and you have delivered us from them all, God. And so we lift up our hands this morning, God. We shout with a triumphant voice, God, how good it is and how pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to come together and real worship, God. Remove everything and anything, God, that would abort our praise and abort our worship, God. We are chasing the enemy out of our sanctuaries, God. We are chasing the enemy out of our sacred worship houses, God. We are chasing the enemy out of our own bodies, God, that keeps asking Acting as if, God, you cannot hear our prayers, God. Many are calling, God, and we ask that you do not pass us by. Whatever you're doing in this season, God, please keep us in your way and keep us in your will. And, God, when it manifests, we won't give the preacher no credit. We won't give the choir member no credit, God. We won't give the world no credit, no politician the credit. We will declare, God, it was nobody but you, God. It was nobody but you, God. It was nobody but but you, God, we love you and we adore you, God. We magnify you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Come on and put your blessed hands together and give God all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise. We ask right now that you would consider uh, giving us uh, the missionary offering at the conclusion of our service when we take up the offering that we might continue to do in reach and outreach that God and God alone might get the glory. Come on city, let's continue to worship God in spirit and truth. And I speak over somebody's life right now. If you would just commit yourself to worship God, you would see your situation different. In fact, if you commit to worship God, I believe you will see yourself different. It's not that God needs to change you need to see the hand of God that's on your life. Amen? Amen. This music ministry is coming forth, and then we're coming forth with a word.
Jesus. 
Jesus yes if you believe it come on and shout out to Jesus right now there's power in the name of Jesus protection in the name of Jesus provision in the name whatever you need right now reach out and grab it oh if you only trust in him oh see Jesus says the land break out Jesus says the land of God Oh, 
get in such a presence that we want the praise team to worship for us. Come on, this is a good time for you to worship God. Come on, worship God, worship God. Come on, worship, worship in the key of me, in the key of me. God has not done anything for you. I understand why you would just sit there and act all cute. Nobody but God that brought you out and brought you over. Come on and worship Him. Worship Him. Bow down before Him. Bow down before Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. If you don't mind, we will take communion after we have received the offering. If you don't mind, I want to go straight to the Word of God. And I want to go to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. This is a familiar passage of Scripture. And the story is covered in all of the Synoptic Gospels. That is to say, the story is covered in Mark. It's covered in Matthew. And it's covered in Luke. Amen. Mark chapter 10, amen, beginning at verse 46 to 52. Mark chapter 10, beginning at verse 46 and concluding at verse 52, amen? Come on, come on, let's read the word of God. Let's stand for the word of God in reverence for the word, amen. The text says, they spent some time in Jericho, and as Jesus was leaving town, trailed by his disciples in a parade of people, a blind beggar by the name of Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, was sitting alongside the road. And when he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by, he began to cry out, Son of David, Jesus, mercy, have mercy on me. And many rose tried to hush him up, but he yelled all the louder. He has my kind of spirit. <laughs> Son of David, mercy, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped in his tracks, called him over. 
and they called him. It's your lucky day. Get up. He's calling you to come. And throwing off his coat, he was on his feet at once and came to Jesus. Jesus said, what can I do for you? The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. On your way, says Jesus, your faith has saved and healed you. In that very instant, somebody said immediately. immediately. He recovered his sight and followed Jesus down the road. May God bless all you children of God with the power of the word of God always. You may be seated in the presence of God. For a brief moment, I just want to speak from a sermonic topic. No, you hush. Would you help me declare this message? No, you hush. And because I know Cedric is here and he's an educator, you have to put a comma after the no to pause. No. You hush. Uh -huh. Amen? No, you hush. I am reading a book by Dr. Sam Shahid titled Cracking Your Church Culture Code Seven Keys to Unleashing Vision and Inspiration. I'm reading this book because I understand that as we get ready to come back into the sanctuary, we have to be intentional in preserving the culture that we have created. The only reason that we have seen the phenomenal growth here at the city of David is because we have created the culture that others have found this to be a place of healing. We have created the culture that others who have been church hurt, and church hurt is real, y'all. They could come into this house and be welcomed. We have created the culture where someone does not believe that they must put on church clothes in order to go to church. They can come into this house and find a body of believers that would help usher them into the presence of God. We have created a church culture that won't look down at anyone else because we realize that we are only here by grace our own selves. We have created a culture where there are no big eyes and there are no little use. Nobody has an assigned seat here at the city of David. You didn't purchase that seat. You didn't purchase that pew. You didn't even purchase that parking spot. Amen, somebody. We have created the culture online where others have decided that they want to be connected in a part of our family. That's the only reason that we have been blessed in this last year, in the midst of this pandemic. That is the only reason over 50 some out people have joined the city of David. It's not because they had to feel like they pressed their way into the sanctuary because right where they are, they felt the benefits of our culture. He goes on to declare in this book that culture, not vision nor strategy, is the most powerful factor in any organization or any family. He quotes Dick Clark, who once declared that culture eats strategy for lunch. Culture impacts every family in every organization. Because without the right culture, you can give a sports car the best engine in the world, but the wheels will work as if they are stuck in the mud. Without the right culture, the body can get and receive a new organ and reject said organ. He goes on to declare that culture is an acronym. The C is for control. The U is for understanding. The L is for leadership. The T is for trust. The U is for unafraid. The R is for responsive. And the E is for execution. He declares culture is the most powerful factor in your family. He goes on to say because vision and strategy usually focus on the products and the services and the outcomes but culture is about the people, the most valuable asset in any family. Culture is about the people, the most valuable asset in any church. 
And that is why we at the city of David has elevated people over money. We have elevated ministry over ministry. He goes on to say that a toxic culture is like carbon monoxide. You don't see it. You can't smell it. But you're going to wake up dead. Here in our text, I believe that one man is in a culture, is in a toxic culture, but yet he is saved and rescued by God. Last week, we told the story of a man who prayed, and today we are telling another story about a man who prayed. This is in alignment with scripture because the Bible is clear in Luke 18 and 1 that men and women ought to always pray. All three of the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they share the account of this man and this prayer and this story, but there are some details that are quite different. Matthew and Luke declare that this event occurred as Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd was leaving Jericho on their way to Jerusalem so that Jesus might be offered up for your sin and my sin. But in Mark's accounts, he declares that Jesus and his disciples and the large crowd was just arriving at Jericho. It does not matter whether or not you believe Jesus was leaving Jericho or just getting to Jericho. Jericho was a significant location in the story. And Jericho is an important city. In the Old Testament, it was the first city that Joshua and the Israelites conquered after they affirmed the promises of God were with them. It was Jericho, I learned at the city of David last week in Bible study. It was the fulfillments of God's declaration that God was with them. Jericho was the place of their first battle where God empowered them to defeat their enemies, even though they were outnumbered significantly. And here at Conclusion of Jesus' earthly ministry, he's going through Jericho because Jericho was the road that led to Jerusalem. It was almost as if Jericho represented the presence of God. And in this story, there are some details that are quite different. Matthew in chapter 20 suggests that there were two random blind men that were suffering from an affliction, but they have strategically placed themselves in a position for something to be done about their situation. And Matthew says in Matthew 20, there were two blind men. Luke says in chapter 18, Cedric, that there was one man and he was suffering from that affliction, but he had strategically placed himself in a position for something to be done about his situation. But in our text, Mark only says that there was one man suffering from affliction. He had been placed in a position in order to get help by his situation. The reason I like Mark's text better than Luke and better than Matthew is because Mark suggests that this man did something that the other synoptic gospels does not say that he did. The first thing I need to teach you is that they declared that his name was Bartimaeus. And Bartimaeus by name means that he was the son of Timaeus. And when you study and read the scripture, what you understand is that Timaeus was blind and he passed that affliction to his son Bartimaeus and Bartimaeus was blind. And what you need to understand when you read our account is that Bartimaeus screamed louder than the other man. Bartimaeus understood that he had an affliction but he had the power to open up his mouth in order to create a new paradigm shift in his life. Oh, so that went over some of y'all head. That means every now and then some of us can keep it to ourselves. That's why every now and then when we come to church, we might make a little more noise than our neighbor and the, than our pew member. It's because our pew member is okay with being afflicted. Our pew member is okay with their situation. They're fighting depression and they want to hold it in. They're fighting grief and they want to hold it in. They are fighting a poverty spirit and they want to hold it in. They are fighting bad family. 
family dynamics and they want to hold it in. They are fighting a bad situation with their child and they want to hold it in. They are fighting a bad situation in the marriage and they want to hold it in. But there are some of us that are not going to leave here like we came. There are some of us that are not going to leave here like Hannah. More broken when we came to church than when we left church. There are some of us that know what we want and we know what we don't want and we are declaring that we're going to get what we want unto the glory of God. And so every now and then we are not afraid and we're not going to apologize because when we come in the presence of God, we're going to open up our mouth and declare what it is that we're going through. Am I talking to anybody that can open up your mouth and declare everything may not be perfect in your life, but you can open up your mouth until your change comes? Am I talking to anybody that's going to open up your mouth because you need a new paradigm shift? Would you open up your mouth? I like Bartimaeus account because in this account the Bible says that Bartimaeus he opened up his mouth and he began to scream about his situation oh my god I like this account because the text says that Bartimaeus is blind he's blind Cedric and he has an affliction but what I like about the text is that the text teaches us Matthew says that he's blind also but Matthew says that he heard from other people that Jesus was passing by in other words he used what he had in order to strategically place himself in a position for God to bless him and I like that the story happens outside of the sanctuary because it lets us know that we can get a move of God outside of the sanctuary Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem but on the side of the road, a man is about to get a breakthrough. I stopped by to encourage somebody right there in the midst of your house. If you would just open up your mouth and give God the glory, God can show up. I stopped by to tell somebody on a job, if you would just open up your mouth, God can show up. I stopped by to encourage somebody at the schoolhouse, if you would just open up your mouth, God can show up. I stopped Somebody encourage somebody in the hospital room. If you would just open up your mouth, God can show up. Now he's blind, but he uses what he has because he asks the people what's going on in the city, and they let him know that Jesus is passing by. He cannot see. But he's using his ears and he's using his mouth. I stop by to encourage somebody, use whatever you have in order to get in the presence of God. Use whatever you have in order to move to the next level. You may not have the looks like they have the look, but you still can get a glory from God. You may not have all the degrees on the wall. In fact, all you got is sis, some called common. You better use Use that common sense in order to get in the presence of God. You may not live in the heights of Ladera or the park of you, but wherever you live, you better believe that God can turn your situation around. You may not be no administrator or no supervisor on your job, but you gotta use what you have in order to get in the presence of God. You may not be no officer at the church, but you better use what you have in order to get in the presence of God. You may not have on church clothes, but whatever you have on right now, you better use what you have in order to get in God's presence. And that's why when some of us come we may not come like you want us to come, but we have come to get in the presence of God. That's why some of us may come and we may only know one stanza of, stanza of amazing grace, but we have come in the presence of God. We may only know one Bible verse, but we have come in the presence of God. We may not know your polity. We may not know all your procedures. We may not know all your bylaws. Y'all don't know your bylaws. We may not know all the your polity of when to stand up and when to sit down, but we had enough sense to know if we can get in the presence of God, God can make a way somehow. If I'm sitting on somebody's door right now that believe if I can just get in the presence of God, God can make a way somehow. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, my situation can 
change. Oh, would you open up your mouth right now and give God the glory? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I can just get in the presence of God, something can happen. And he knows right now that God is passing by. And I'm going to use whatever I have. I may only know that Jesus wept, but I'm going to use that in order to get in the presence of God. I may only know, Sister Fania, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But I'm going to use that to get in the presence of God. Because when I get in the presence of God, I declare my situation is getting ready to change. And so the Bible declares that he begins to call out Cedric. He understands that Jesus is passing by. And he understands, although his eyes don't work, his mouth works. And he begins to cry out. And he heard the people cry out. Now notice, they cried out in a certain manner. They cried out. Some of these judgmental, hypocritical church folk that want to look you up and down, you got to see them for who they are and what they are. They may have big offerings. They may have Sunday white clothes on, but they still don't have reverence for God. There's some people that believe they supersede God in the church, and otherwise they wouldn't be claiming no pew seat. They wouldn't be claiming no choir seat, realizing the whole sanctuary, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness there of. It all belongs to God. Anytime God gives you an opportunity to come in his house, you ought to come with gratefulness. Anytime God gives you an opportunity to come in the midst of his presence, you ought to be excited. You didn't come because you've been good. You didn't come because you've been holy. You came because of the grace of God. Am I talking to anybody who knows that you are operating in the grace of God? Would you open your mouth this morning and give God the glory. Would you open up your mouth this morning and pray and praise him. the phony church type is because they declare Jesus of Nazareth. It's almost as if they still be mad that God has decided to use somebody from the hood in order to elevate to being the king. And David and in the midst of this, you got to understand that Bartimaeus, although he did not have what they had, and although he did not look like they wanted him to look, he did go to church every now and then to understand that you don't approach Jesus like this. You don't call him Jesus of Nazareth. You better call him Jesus from heaven because he is the walking incarnation of God. He understood the word of God because the prophets declared that that you must go to God and you must call him who he is. Isaiah says it like this in chapter 11 verse 1. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse and the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and fear. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. Solomon says it like this in Proverbs 9. That the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Jeremiah says it like this in chapter 23 that coming from David will be a branch and y'all in Judah will call him holy. Ezekiel declared that in Ezekiel 34 from the line of David will come the Savior y'all will call the Prince of Peace. Matthew says it like this in Matthew 1 and 1. He is Jesus the son of David and so while he was on the side of the road the Bible says that Bartimaeus opened up his mouth and he called Jesus what he is he said Jesus the son of David have mercy on me Jesus the son of David move in my situation am I talking to anybody right where you are you know you need something from God would you just open up your mouth and declare Jesus us over that situation. If you don't need anything, stay there and stay mute. But if you know you need Jesus to make a way, would you just open up your mouth and declare Jesus over my family, Jesus. Over my parents, Jesus. Over my children, Jesus. Over my finances, Jesus. Over my career, Jesus. Over my health, Jesus. Over my mind, Jesus. Would you open up your mouth right now and declare Jesus? He is the King of Kings, Jesus. He is the Lord of Lords. Open up your mouth right now and give 
give God the glory. And so the Bible declares that he opened up his mouth and he declared Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible says that many rebuke him and told him to be quiet. I get so sick and tired of folks trying to tell us how to get in the presence of God. And so I came by to encourage every believer under the sound of my voice, don't you let people tell you how to heal. Don't you let people tell you how to heal. Because your healing may be different than their healing. And your deliverance may be different than their deliverance. Notice they had nothing to say in all the other chapters when they ran to Jesus for help. And when others ran to Jesus for help. They didn't even have an issue when in fact earlier in Mark 10 they even ran to Jesus for help. But the moment you open up your mouth, church folk got something to say. The moment you open up your mouth, these holy rollers want to talk about you. I stop by to put them all on notice. Go ahead and talk about me in this season because I'm opening up my mouth until I come out. Go ahead and talk about me in this season because I'm going to go ahead and open up my mouth because I wanted this man. I don't, I don't want to come out by myself. I want every family member connected to me to come out. I don't want just my bloodline to come out, but I want my church family, City of David, to come out. And so if you mad, just sit there and be big mad, because I'm going to open up my mouth until we go to the next level. I'm going to open up my mouth until we climb higher mountains. Am I talking to anybody that want to join pastor together and open it up your mouth? Will you open up your mouth this morning and give God the glory? Hush! Negro, please. I'm going to open up my mouth and give God the glory. I'm going to open up my mouth and declare what I need God to do in my life. Would you open up your mouth right now and give God the glory? trying to get healed. Now they got a whole lot to say when you're trying to get healed. But the Bible says that Bartimaeus, he had some meat going on. Because the more they said hush, the louder he got. I stopped by to tell somebody, when you come back in the sanctuary, I'm going to put you on notice. When you come back in sanctuary, don't you say one mumbling word to me. You were not there when I cried last night. You were not there when I was afflicted. You were not there when I had to be quarantined and stuck in. And I didn't have the ability to hug my family, hug my daughter. You better not say one mumbling word when I come and give God the glory. In fact, I'm not going to even wait till I get in the sanctuary. I'm going to go ahead right now and give God some glory. Can we have a praise break right now and go all in? Can we have a praise break right now and give God the glory? Can we have a praise break right now and declare how good God has been? Would you open up your mouth right now? Would you open up your mouth right now? Would you open up your mouth right now and give God the glory? Would you open up your mouth right now and praise His name? Who brought you out? Who brought you out? Who brought you out? Open up your mouth right now. Give God the glory. Open up your mouth right now and pray. Jesus 
to stop in his tracks. I started about to tell somebody, if you would just cry out about that situation, you know, Jesus will show up. If you would just cry out about that situation, Jesus will pull up. I'm not talking to anybody. Now notice, the Bible says that Jesus stopped and he called for him. The blind beggar, he called for him. Jesus says in his verse, I know my sheep and my sheep know my voice. He stopped and he cried out to him. And look at how the haters responded. They said, lucky you. The devil is a lie. I'm not lucky, I'm blessed. I'm not lucky, I'm loved. The devil is a lie. The Bible says that they say, you lucky one, he's calling for you. And the Bible says that the man threw his cloak aside and he jumped to his feet and he came to Jesus. Now, I need you to understand, if this man was blind, oh my God, y'all missing this. If he was blind, how would he know in which direction in order to walk in, in order to go toward Jesus? But the Bible says that Jesus says, watch this, what do you want for me? Some of y'all missing this. If, if Jesus is omnipresent, Sister Fania, if Jesus is omnipresent, then he already knows what this man needs. Oh my God, Malachi, somebody don't get this. If Jesus is omnipresent, then he already knows what this man wants. This is not about a test, Fania, because the Bible says in James 4 and 2, you have not because you ask not. Am I talking to anybody that's going to open up your mouth right now? And, and you're going to begin to just cry out what you need God to do in your life? And, and, am I talking to anybody right where you are? You're going to begin to cry out right now because you need God? The reason it has not manifest is because you've been too bougie to open up your mouth. Am I talking to anybody who wants to go to the next level? Am I top? Talking to anybody who's tired of being in the land of just enough and not enough, and you ready to get the whole bag to take us all in? Would you open up your mouth right now and act like you just want to live a YOLO life? Would you open up your mouth right now and act like when you cry out this time, everybody in your bloodline is coming out, everybody in your family is coming out? When you cry out this time, it's not just for you, it's for everybody connected to you. Open up your mouth and the what you need, God. Anybody need God to free you from addiction? Anybody need God to free you from bondage? Anybody need God to free you from some toxic culture? Would you open up your mouth right now and ask God for what you need? Would you open up your mouth right now and ask God for what you desire? The Bible says that the moment that Father man asked God, God worked it out. If you would open up your mouth, I declare God will work it out. Don't hush, get louder. Don't hush, get louder. Don't hush, get louder. Act like you believe God will do it. Act like you know God will do it. Open up your mouth, city. Open up your mouth, city. Open up your mouth, city. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. general prayer. Yes. Would you begin to be specific this morning? Yes. Well, Maddie, what you need God to do? Mm -hmm. Rose, what you, Malachi, what you need God to do? Yes. Vanilla, what you need God to do? Nina, what you need yes. God to do? Cedric, what you need yes. God to do? Michelle, what you need God to do? Zai, what you need? Chuck, what you need God to do? Would you just open up your yes. mouth right now yes. and be specific with what you need God to do? I mean, come on, would you just open it online? What you need? What you need, Sister Willow? What you need, Sister Trina? What you need, Brother Derek? Would you open up your mouth right now and believe like God can give you whatever you open up your mouth? Because the Bible says that when the man says, I want to see immediately, e immediately, the Bible says that he was able to see. He was able, what he was asked 
asking God for it came in a moment's notice. In a, in, would, would you open up your mouth like you know that God can do it in a moment's notice? Would you? <laughs> Y'all playing with me. Would you open up your mouth for, like you believe God can do it? And anybody need a healing? Would you open up your mouth? Anybody need deliverance? Would you open up your mouth right now and believe? Anybody need a financial breakthrough? Would you open up your mouth right now like you believe God can do it? In fact, I got that kind of prayer that I believe even before we finish prayer, the answer will be already on the way. Would you open up your mouth this morning and believe just like Isaac was praying for Rebecca? You got that kind of spirit this morning that even before you say amen, the answer will be on the way. Even before you say amen, the blessing will be on the way. Open up your mouth, city, and give God the glory. Don't hush. Open up your mouth and praise him. Open up your mouth and worship him. Open up your mouth and cry out to him. Open up your mouth. Your faith has healed you. Yes. Can, I, can, I, can I give you three dimensions of this man's faith we see? And, and I want your faith to grow into this area. First dimension I want you to see is that this man's faith can recognize Jesus. Yes. I want your faith to be able to recognize Jesus. Yes. I want your faith, now that you can go outside now, that the, the restrictions are lifted. I want your faith to be able to recognize the sheep yes, from the wolves. Yes, yes. I want your faith to be able to recognize the sheep that are coming at you in, in, in wolf clothing. I, his faith recognized Jesus. The second thing I want you to see the dimension of his faith is that his faith believed that with Jesus there are no limits. Am I talking to anybody who has that kind of faith this morning? You believe that with Jesus there are no limits? I mean, don't say it and don't clap about it if you don't believe it. I'm talking to somebody right now that believe that whatever you need, Jesus can make it come to pass. I believe I'm talking to somebody right now that believe that you got a kind of faith that he can do exceeding and above all you ever thought, dream, or imagine that he can, that he you might have life and have it more abundantly. I'm talking to somebody that believes that overflow is a lifestyle. Would you open up your mouth this morning and pray? Would you open up your mouth and praise? Would you open up your mouth and cry out to God and give God all the glory and the honor and the praise? The third dimension that he has in his faith that I want you to see is that after it manifests, he doesn't get brand new. <laughs> after it manifests, he understands that the praise Got to match the prayer. Yes. If you've been praying God for it over and over again, yes. when God bless you with it, don't get brand new. Jesus. <laughs> when you've been praying God for a new situation, yes. and God deliver a new situation wrapped in a package you didn't think it would come in, yes. don't get brand new. Because the text says that when he received the blessing, he didn't go the opposite way. His faith turned him around to follow Jesus. Yes. <laughs> when Jesus bring you out, I want you to follow Jesus. Because yes. realize it wasn't no church folk that brought you out. They told you to hush. Ooh. They was fine with you being blind. Mm -hmm. They was fine with you yes. being depressed. Yes. They was fine with you being broke. Yes. They was fine when you being angry. Yes. They was fine when you was in that little shack. Mm -hmm. They was fine when you had that hootie. And, and, and if you know that it was nobody but God that did it, oh. when God manifests, yes. follow Jesus. Yes. When God manifests, follow God. And, 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 and what I would declare to you is because I realize only God has grown the city to be what the city has become. Yeah. I'm not going to get brand new and do anything opposite of what we've been doing. Yeah. We're going to keep the main thing the main thing yeah. and we're going to follow Jesus. Yeah. We're going to keep the main thing the main thing and we're going to pick up our own cross. We're going to keep the main thing the main thing and we're going to deny ourselves. That we might follow Jesus and that Jesus might continue to breathe on us. Hallelujah. Hush, Negro, please. Jesus. I need Jesus to do this in my life. Yes. Amen. 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 Come on, stand all over this house. Come on, stand. No, you hush. No, you hush. 
I know what God can do in my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. First appeal is that of kingdom. You want to know this God that we have just shouted about. You want to pray the prayer of salvation. God, come into my life. I'm a sinner needing to be saved by grace. Come into my life, God. Take total control. Breathe and wash me anew that I may be a new creation in you. I cannot do nothing without you. And if you come into my life, God, I will accept you freely and declare that I'm ready to walk a new life with you. If that is your need of a prayer and you have just prayed that, I would love to privately speak with you and have a talk with you about what that means. Salvation is free, but it must be maintained. And because it must be maintained, I offer up the city of David. That's the second appeal. If you know that you need a church home that'll help you maintain your salvation, would you just go ahead and type all in on the screen? Amen. You need a church home that'll encourage you, won't talk about you, won't tell you when you come broke in the hush, but, but will help usher you in the presence of God. I would love for you to be the next member here at the city of David. Just go ahead and type all in. Sister Kelly Davis joined us last week. You could join us today. Amen. Type all in. You don't need us. We need you in order to be the church God is calling us to be. Amen. Amen. If you're hosting something and you see somebody type all in, go ahead and flag us that we might reach out. Amen. Come on, raise your hands up to God. God, we say thank you for this word. God, we say thank you for the opportunity that you give us to come to you. Broken as we might be, God, we can come to you just as we are. We thank you, God, that while all others are crying out, you know our voice. And I declare right now, God, that you would convict our hearts, that we will put pride aside, put ego aside, and trust that we can cry out to you in a loud voice. And that you would bless us abundantly. Loose and free, my brother and my sister, God. Remove all shame in this shame-filled culture. We pray right now, God, for the culture that you are helping us to create at the city of David. We declare it's you and you alone, God, that has done it. We just give you the glory and the honor and the praise. We love you and adore you, God. We magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, praise God, praise God. They tell me somebody is joining the church right now. I wish I had a church that would just get excited. I wish I had a church right now that would just, I wish I had a church right now that would get all excited. I wish I had a church. Amen. And you may be seated in the presence of God. Thank you, my dear sister. For being the next member here at the city of David, you are a member as of today. We accept you with open arms, praying God's blessings upon your life, praying that God would richly reward your obedience. I know it took a lot for you to take this step, and so I pray that this week that God would affirm and confirm in your own life how you have made the right choice and how he is ready to bless you because of your obedience. Amen? Amen, amen, praise God. We, you still can type all in and join our church right now. Amen, amen. Amen, you don't have to wait till you get back in the sanctuary to be a member. Amen? amen. Praise God. No, you hush. We give God the glory and the honor and the praise. This is the time when we take up our offering, amen. We ask right now that you would, if you don't mind, consider writing a check, making it out to the city of David, Melanin to P.O. Box 485, Gardena, California, 90248. Online, you may use the Givelify. Choose our church and the logo. Amen. Give of whatever denomination. You may use Cash App, dollar sign, City of David 2017. You might even use Venmo, at City of David 2017. Those are the four ways we ask that you would give. Please don't forget the missionary offering. Last night in our e-blast, we sent out the stewardship report for the month of April. I pray and ask that you would read that, that 
you not be ignorant about what your church is doing. We hide nothing here at the city of David, transparent in everything, realizing all good and perfect gifts shall come from God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Now, as we transition, if you give us about five minutes, we'll be ready to go home. As we transition to our communion, we ask that you would recite the Apostles' Creed with us all together. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communities of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. 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 Let us uh, prepare our begin right now to grab all of your uh, consecration elements that you might be able to take them. And we will take the consecration elements all at the same time. Amen. 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 We ask that you hold it down in there in the back. Amen. 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 Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turned unto thee. Have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all of our sins. Confirm our faith and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, unto whom heart, all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we might perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. It is our very meet, right, and our bounded duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy holy name, evermore praising thee in sin, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusted in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy did us give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself, once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of this whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death, until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receive in these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institute, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who on the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remissions of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Hallelujah. Please grab your cracker, your bread, or whatever you might have to represent the body. Please hold it up. Amen. This is my body that was broken for you. Take and eat of it. Amen. 
please grab the juice, Moscato, Mimosa, wine, man, Pinot Grigio, apple juice. Raise it up. This is my blood that was shed for you. Take and drink of it. Thank you, Jesus. Let us all recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, stand all over this house. Remember, please volunteer this week. Please uh, fill out the achievement form. We are re re-entering for Bible study this Tuesday. Amen. Next Saturday is Conversation in the City. Our sister Roberta will teach us how to keep the bag. And then next Sunday, we're celebrating all of the mothers. Amen. Amen. No, you hush. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless with exceeding joy. To the only wise and true God we know be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Now henceforth and forevermore, let us all say together, amen, amen, amen. Have a wonderful day and a blessed week. I love you much.